Need a day off again? It happens to most everybody. In these hectic times, an occasional day off is not only okay, but much needed. But if you find that you're allowing yourself days off more often and having trouble getting things done, it could be a sign that something is wrong. No motivation at work, an overwhelming to-do list, or even an undiagnosed illness are just a few of the things that could be getting in the way of your desire to tackle everyday life. If you want to tackle this problem, then the tips in today's video are meant for you. If you like our videos, support us with a thumbs up, subscribe, activate the little bell, and look forward to the videos we upload for you every day. Number 1. Set Realistic Goals Setting unrealistic goals and taking on too much can lead to burnout. Although it's not an actual clinical diagnosis, the symptoms of burnout are recognized by medical professionals. Job burnout can cause exhaustion, loss of interest and motivation, and a real desire to escape. This is serious stuff. And if you think you're well on your way to this status, bail out. But to prevent it from happening in the first place, avoid overloading yourself. You can do this by setting yourself smaller, realistic milestones so that you are not overwhelmed by the first step. Not everything needs to be done in one day. And some things may not need to be done at all. Number 2. Don't be a perfectionist Perfectionism is on the rise and it takes a psychological toll. A 2017 study that looked at college students between 1989 and 2016 found a rapid increase in perfectionism over the years. Researchers found that young people today face a more competitive environment, more unrealistic expectations, and more anxious and controlling parents than generations before. This increased perfectionism leads people to be overly critical of themselves and others. It has also led to an increase in depression and anxiety. If you can't be satisfied with an occasional suboptimal result once in a while, then you are most likely a perfectionist. This may sound great at first, because everything you do seems to be perfect. But at what price? Try to consciously tone down your goals to 80-90% to 90 of perfection. You will see that the world will not end. Number 3. Stick up for yourself Self-criticism can stifle all your efforts right from the beginning. Even criticizing yourself for being lazy can have a negative impact on your productivity. You can stop this inner negative voice by practicing positive discussions with yourself. Instead of saying, there's no way I can do this, try saying, I'll give it my all to get it done. You've probably heard of the self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell yourself something long enough, it will eventually become reality. This works for the worse, but also for the better. Try it. Tell yourself that you'll get it done, that you'll do a good job, and that you'll do it well. If only to avoid thinking of yourself as a liar, you'll try harder, get further, and feel less stress. Number 4. Make a plan As with the to-do list, it's important to be realistic. Write down what you need to achieve your goal. Factor in setbacks and extra time. This takes the pressure off the whole undertaking, but it also gives you something with which to orient yourself, so you never feel lost. No matter what is going on around you, you always have your plan to consult and check off milestones as you advance. Number 5. Trust your strengths Take a moment to remind yourself of your strengths. What are you particularly good at? What do you enjoy doing? What has helped you before? You should bring these positive attributes into every planning session. This not only brings you closer to your goal, but also strengthens your self-confidence. Number 6. Give yourself a pat on the back. This can mean that you record your successes in writing so that when you're in a slump, you can go back and review and relive your accomplishments. Do good things and talk about them. Let those around you know what you're working on and what you are achieving even more so if the boss is listening. Number seven, ask for help. Many people believe that asking for help is a sign of weakness, but if you don't ask for help, you risk failing. A 2018 study found that people who don't ask their colleagues for help are more likely to be unhappy in their jobs and have lower job performance. They were also perceived less favorably by their employers. 
As you can see, asking for help is beneficial on so many levels, so take heart. You'll be thrilled with what comes back. Number 8. Avoid distractions. We've all been there, of course. Bored with the task at hand, rambling, scrolling through social media, cleaning, playing with the cat, talking on the phone. Any distraction is a good distraction at that moment. Basically, though, we know it's not good. We really can't even enjoy the distraction because we feel guilty. So we'd be better off concentrating on our work and enjoying a diversion later. Easier said than done, but with these tips, you can do it. Find a quiet place to work. As much as possible, exclude all sources of distraction. Install an app that keeps your online time to a minimum during the day. Figure out what distracts you the most and address it. Number 9. Spice up your boring tasks. I think we could all agree that the worst tasks are the most boring ones. Get the most out of them. Want to listen to your favorite podcast? Listen while you clean the oven. Lawn needs to be mowed and weeds pulled? Put a fitness tracker on your upper arm and enjoy the calories burned. Number 10. Treat and reward yourself. What works for dogs can't be that bad for humans. Work with rewards, whether that's a nice meal at your favorite Italian restaurant or a new pair of shoes after a day's work. Today's conclusion. As you can see, there are a few things that can help you get out of your listless slump and take charge of things. You don't have to use all 10 tips. Sometimes, just one is enough to beat procrastination. Just figure out which ones make the most sense to you and try to remember them as often as possible. The more often you consciously follow these tips, the more they will enter your subconscious and become a habit. Then, at some point, it will become automatic second nature to you. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Did you find this information helpful? Do you have experience with it? We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. For more resources about mental health, self-improvement, and psychology, visit our website. You'll find the link in the video description where you can also connect with us on social media and sign up for our email list. Take care of yourself and have a beautiful day.